Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Today, Adobe has updated Lightroom to version 6.6. .6. If you're a Creative Cloud user, the new version is 2015.6. Now, this update has the usual bug fixes, new lens profiles. It has some support for newer cameras. Creative Cloud users are going to get a significant new addition to their program and that is a new tool called guided upright now i'm going to talk more specifically about that tool and how to use it in a minute there are a couple new additions i guess to the program for both 6.6 .6 users and creative cloud users and that is that in the past if you were merging a bunch of images into a panorama or an hdr you had to have the original images on your computer now you could do that with smart preview so that's a nice addition but I, I admit a minor feature the other thing is in the past if you were using lightroom mobile and you were syncing your desktop or your laptop to lightroom mobile you could inadvertently close down lightroom in the middle of the sync before the sync is completed now in preferences there is an option for you to have lightroom flash a warning that there's pending sync activity that way you don't close down lightroom until the sync is done now if you're watching this video on youtube in the description below the video will be a link to my website and there will be all the new lens profiles camera profiles and all this stuff i just mentioned so be sure to click that link if you want to check out all the new stuff and bug fixes that have been done to lightroom now i did mention that creative cloud users have this new function it's called guided upright and i'm going to show you really very quickly how to use that now all users when you do upgrade either 6.6 .6 or the creative cloud version you'll notice that there's a new tab in the develop module it's called transform and all they really did was if you remember in lens correction you had all those uh, transform tools there they took them out of there and they put them down here so they're all there and in addition or what they added to those tools is the new guided tool now adobe recommends that if you are going to use the guided tool to do lens corrections first because the profile correction will directly affect how the guided tool operates so go into lens corrections and make sure that you click this box enable profile correction now in this case I used a Nikon camera and it found my lens if it didn't find your lens go through these drop downs and make sure it finds the lens now if you're using a newer mirrorless camera or micro four thirds camera the profile is probably already built in and you should not check this box you'll get a little warning down here telling you that that profile has already been enabled so again if you're using a newer mirrorless or micro four-thirds camera if you have that information down here that the profile has already been applied you do not need to check this box all right now remove chromatic aberration you could just check that that will not have any effect on how this new guided tool works now the guided tool really shines for architectural photos or for real estate images where you're taking pictures of the inside of a room and you really need the corners nice and square and all your lines straight and things like that in an image like this you could see it it's maybe very slightly crooked but I was down and I was shooting up at the art gallery so it looks like it's tilted back a little bit so there's some distortion there now the wider the angle lens you have the more distortion you have and this really this tool really does help now to elicit the tool you could do that three different ways you could click right here where this little jagged checker or you know tic-tac-toe box is or you could click right here where it says guided or if you prefer to use a keyboard shortcut just hit shift T and that turns on the tool and you can see that when I hover over the image now I have crosshairs and I have a little loop to the lower right of the crosshairs that little loop is just a magnifier that helps you lay down these lines that we're going to be doing more accurately now what you do is you could lay down at least two lines or preferably four lines 
Two lines horizontally will, will correct any horizontal distortion your image has. Two lines vertically will correct any vertical distortion your image might have. And what you want to, what you hope is that there's something in your image that will allow you or that helps you lay these lines down really straight. Now, in the case of this art gallery, I have the stairs, so there's a nice straight line right there to go horizontally. And at the towards the top of the building, I have this little like uh, line here that is nice uh, horizontal line that I could draw. Vertically, I have these edges right here that will allow me to draw vertical lines. Now, the little bit I've messed with the program or this tool, I should say, I found that it works best if the sets of lines, meaning the horizontal lines or the vertical lines, are as far apart from one another as possible. Now, preferably, I'd love to put one horizontal line way up here and the other horizontal line way down here. And similarly, I'd like the vertical line way to the left and way to the right for the second one. Realistically, not all your images will allow you to do that. This image is a good example. The best horizontal line I could get towards the top is right here, which is just a little bit past the middle of the image. So you have to make do with what you have to make do. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the horizontal lines first. And it doesn't matter. You could do the vertical first, the horizontal first, or you could just do one set. If you just want to correct vertical distortion, just do the vertical lines and similarly for horizontal. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the loop tool to help, tool to help me. And I'm just going to go to the edge of this little line here best I can and then draw right across and get it right about where I need it to be which is right about there now it's been my experience the little bit I've used the tool today that it doesn't matter as much how long your line is that you drew it just has to be as accurate as possible um, so don't worry I mean I'm not fretting that I'm only drawing from there to there that's not that big of an issue now I do have longer I could draw down here so I'm going to go to the top of that one step to the top of the same step at the other end and it really didn't do anything and that's because I guess I did pretty good leveling the shot off so I shot it pretty nice and level so there's not a lot of horizontal distortion to worry about but the vertical you're going to see a significant change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this line right here. And again, I'm not too worried that it's not going to be a very long line. And you can see that corrected it quite a bit, but it's going to correct it even more when I draw the second line right here. The second vertical line, I should say. And there it corrected. So there now it corrected horizontally and vertically now what Lightroom did it really distorted the image and the way I'm going to show you that is I'm going to go to the scale slider and as I turn scale down you can see how it really distorted the image to make it nice and square now my suggestion to you is when you're out shooting if you plan to use this tool try to leave a little extra space on the left and right top and bottom so that when you do use this tool and Lightroom ends up distorting it and cropping out some of the image that the sweet part of your image is still included in your shot. So plan ahead of time and um, shoot accordingly that you know you're going to use this tool. Now, a couple little tips and things for using the tool I could give you. If you look down at the bottom underneath the image, this is called the toolbar. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. That will toggle that on and off. At the far left, you could see that I have the tool overlay set to auto. What that means is when I hover over the image, these lines appear. See them? Now, you could change the behavior of that. You could have it always, so the lines are always there, whether you're hovering over it or not. Or you could have it never, so you never see the lines. I prefer auto. That's the way I like it. When I'm over the image, I like them to appear, and when I'm not over the image, they don't appear. Now, 
you could toggle this with keyboard shortcuts. Hit the A key on your keyboard. The A key, as you can see, I hit it once, it went to never. I'll hit the A key again, it went to always. I hit the A key again and it went to auto. So that you could toggle that that way. Now you might have noticed when I'm hovering over any of these uh, sliders over here that a grid is appearing on the image. You could change the way that operates too with show grid. Right now I have it on auto. If I put it to never, when I hover over the sliders, it's not appearing at all. If I put it to always, you could see that the grid is there all the time. You could also change the slider to change the size of the grid like that. Now, you could there's a keyboard shortcut for this also. And for that, it's the H key. So if you hit the H key, it will just toggle between never and auto in this case. So just the two, it just toggles between that. Now, I mentioned I like the loop tool. If you do not like seeing that loop, you could just check this box right here and it turns it off. So we don't have a loop tool. A keyboard shortcut for that is the O key on your keyboard. And there's O, we'll toggle it on and off. All right, now we did our transformation and we're done. You could put the tool away by clicking right here and we're done. Or you could just click done right here at the lower right hand corner and you're done. One thing you do not want to do is you do not want to click any other any of these other boxes that's off auto level vertical full while that tool is still active because you're just going to undo everything you just did. All right, so just make sure that you click done or put the tool away before you go on and start processing other parts of your image. Now, as far as these lines, you can see they have little squares at the ends of my draw where I drew the line. If I wanted to micro adjust any of these, if I hover over that square, it turns into a little hand, my cursor does, and you could grab it and you could like just micro adjust your line a little bit, move it around. If you want to delete a line, just click on it to make it active and then hit the delete key on your keyboard and that will delete that line. And then you could draw a new one or whatever you, you want to do. So that's just a quick way to uh, adjust or to uh, you know get rid of a line or add a line or anything like that. So that is how you use this tool in a nutshell. I hope that made sense. Um, again, I, I kind of feel for uh, Lightroom 6 users that you don't get this upgrade right away. Uh, that's just too bad, really. Um, hopefully you get it soon, because I think it really does come in handy, especially if you shoot a lot of architecture or if you shoot a lot of the inside of buildings and rooms from, you know, like a real estate photographer might do. All right, that's it. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.